cold and shivering is making it look cool. Yeah, we're we're rolling. Rat's oh. nest. <laughs> <laughs> again. Yeah. Welcome again to London no, no. Third time lucky, right? Yeah. <laughs> Are you alright, Connor? We'll make yeah. this really quick. Too much for us, but yeah. Yeah. you just have to kind of just deal with it, critique yeah. and bear it. So, how had you ever considered like being front men before? So, the two of you are like swapping over being front men, and Connor, you're um, Connor. Yeah. Connor. <laughs> just, just being there. Connor. I was just there. I was just there. <laughs> I was say, but, did you leave? Yeah, but, um, or did you, you know, know how, how have, you, have you ever considered doing that before? Was it literally a surprise? Um, I think it was like a it was like a brief idea went through our heads when our first vocalist left. Um, but, and then and then we ended up finding someone else. So we were like, okay, we'll drop that idea. And then we just start after he left, we started practicing as we did. Yeah, so that was always the idea that like one of us would take over and get someone else to play. But then we realised that that should never happen. Yeah. At the end of the at the end so of the day, well. we we just thought, what's the point of getting yeah, another vocalist if we know exactly how we want the band to sound? Yeah. Might as well do it ourselves. So, yeah. apart, so apart from um, Liquid, like taking over the vocals, what's been uh, as a band uh, your biggest learning right. curve in terms of like since you started playing? Really positive. Like, um, I think generally writing, just writing with each other, bringing fresh ideas each time. Um, so where do you get your ideas from? It's mix and matching. Sometimes Sam comes to rehearsal with a riff, sometimes Adam does, sometimes it just comes from just a simple lyric idea of a chorus. And we, we, we even had weird points where we'll just decide to like get Connor on the kit, start playing a beat, and then we'll just end up smashing the song out then and there. Or one of us just walks in and says, oh, I've got a full song here. It's, yeah. it's, it all, it's all sorted. And then work it all out together, sort of fine tune it. And to respond with that one now with that. I know we don't play shit so it's lots of play. It's more of a case of um, obviously being 
like at noon and all that, obviously you like the opening band, so it's getting people to turn up and kind of accept a new band into the scene and being young. A lot of the bands we play now, even though they're old, old older, I won't say old, <laughs> older, but um, they've been doing it for a while, they may have been in previous band stuff, we've just kind of popped up out of nowhere yeah, and yeah. it's, yeah, it's trying to, trying to get ourselves out there. And it's, I think it's like trying to fill their shoes as well. Right, and, and, and step up to the level that some of the bands have achieved and, and try and live up to that so that when they're gone hopefully we can fill their boots and, and, and take over and, and start the new youth punk. Yeah, I mean, it's not just us, like, it's not like, oh, we're the only yeah, young yeah. punk when it's like grade two main events. There are bands that are doing really well and now it's almost like yeah. a competition, per se. Not in a bad way, yeah. just yeah. trying to... Friendly competition. Friendly yeah, competition, yeah. just trying to outdo it. It's good to see there's actually like a little scene. It's not just... Yeah. It's the, that yeah. one percent. If you're a young punk band, it's only that, and then it's a niche. And it's just yeah. like, oh, they're young, and then that's it. That's, that's yeah. what you're and, and, and the novelty wears off pretty quickly. I was good. And now that you've said it, yeah, it's making sure that people don't like us just because we're young. It's because we make good music. Well, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> So we had London Lens, uh, no, we had Grade 2 on London Lens um, in January. Uh, yeah, yeah. Af after the first time, the first couple of times we had you. <laughs> yeah. But they uh, they rated you as uh, the best up and coming band. Oh, that's, 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 yeah. that's good, that's good. Um, oh, and, you okay. had <laughs> <laughs> and you had very good things to say about them as well yeah, when we had you on the first yeah, time. We love but it, it, shows with them. It's always going to be a good show when we're on the build grade two. They're extremely um, talented and I hate them for it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah it's not only are they good at getting on with them as well, they've got the yeah. same viewpoints as us, so we can go out and hang out with them. It's, it's always a fun show, always. So, yeah, lovely grade two. <laughs> yeah, just don't be good anymore. <laughs> Stop being so good. <laughs> just continue opening shows for yeah. everyone. Yeah. <laughs> um, different from that because everyone says that yeah, yeah, yeah. what can you say to new bands that um, know exactly what they're going for and know who their target or target audience are what advice would you give to any band, not ju not just a punk band but from any genre I mean I, I never limit your audience never never put like uh, we only want to impress this sort of people try try and wind it as much as you physically can um, where we have certain different yes. elements of hard, different oh elements God. of <laughs> Sorry, I had no idea. <laughs> and sort of bits of elements of hardcore in there. We sort of get a sort of nice round sound and, and hope that a wider audience is enjoy it. Um, I mean, the only other thing is just take every opportunity that you can. Like, all their gear for promoters are like, oh, we can't pay you for this one. Just try and find a way, try yes. and get out. Always, if we try hard, it's always a thing. There's, there's always, an open mic night somewhere, there's some youth centre that will put you on as any, anywhere can, you know. If you're up, if you're up and coming, you are going to have to learn to bite the bullet when you're constantly being paid at a certain point. You know? Yeah. But don't allow them to take you for a mug in your... So when do you think when do you think that stops? When do you stop being an up and coming band who need who needs exposure and you become an established band who who starts to stand your ground? Oh, um, I think it's when when you're getting contacted and they want you on, rather than you having to go to the promoter and say, can you put my band on here, can you put my band on there? I think once you're getting emails or messages and they're coming in and 
people want you to play, then you can start putting up a higher demand and you can start saying, all right, yeah, we, we're putting our rate up, we, we want a certain amount or, or whatever. And I think that's sort of when you've got to draw the line and say to yourself, yeah, yeah, we, we're worth more than just going out and opening shows now and, and playing for no money. And standing in the rain doing an interview for well, you. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. still, even still, I think bite the bullet now and again still and, and go out for them shows that are good exposure and just so, make, so finding the balance between what's going to give you good exposure and what you need to be paid for now. Yeah, yeah. there will always be risks. Yeah, yeah figure, just figure out what's worth it, yeah. basically. Rats Nest, thank you for standing in the rain. Yeah. <laughs> um, hopefully we'll do this in the sun sometime. Yeah. See you. Yeah. Cheers. Hi. Thank you. Thank you.